Welcome to Shellcast, the official podcast of the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel. Come along and discover the best of Southwest Florida. We're located along the Gulf Coast, about two hours south of Tampa in Lee County, Florida. I'm your host, Jackie Parker. So more specifically, in this episode of Shellcast, we're continuing our visit to uh, J.N. Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge on Sanibel Island, where we interview Ranger Tony Westland. She is the supervisory refuge ranger there. The J.N. Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge was named after J. Norwood Darling. He was a two-time Pulitzer Prize winning cartoonist for the Des Moines Register, and he was a pioneering conservationist as well. He was instrumental in the efforts to block the sale of a parcel of environmentally valuable land to developers on Sanibel Island. At Darling's urging, President Harry S. Truman signed an executive order creating the Sanibel National Wildlife Refuge in 1945. The refuge was renamed in 1967 in Darling's honor, and it consists of over 6,400 acres of mangrove forest, submerged seagrass beds, cord grass marshes, and West Indian hardwood hammocks. About 2,800 acres of the refuge are designated by Congress as a federal wilderness area. The refuge was created to safeguard and enhance the pristine wildlife habitat of Sanibel Island and to protect endangered and threatened species and to provide feeding, nesting, and roosting areas for migratory birds. The refuge provides important habitat to over 245 species of birds. If you're going to drive through Wildlife Drive in your car, it costs $5. If you want to ride your bike and you're 15 years old or older, it's a dollar. The Visitor and Education Center remains closed until further notice, but its America's rest, Best Restrooms are open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily. There's a water bottle filling station outside the restrooms, and those facilities are thoroughly cleaned and sanitized daily for everyone's safety. The nature store that's located inside the visitor center, which is actually closed right now, is offering free curbside delivery for orders placed on shopdingdarling.com during the store's closure. And you can call 239-472-1100, extension 241, or visit the website to learn more about that. So in this episode, uh, Tony takes us um, on uh more on the indigo trail and so you're going to hear our feet you know crunching along the trail you know with the shells and everything and it's it's really kind of you know actually pretty nice on the knees and uh, she's going to tell us about their upcoming project the uh, wildlife on wheels and we learn a little bit about ranger tony and then she gives us a tour of the award-winning learning laboratories at uh, at Ding Darling. It's uh, right around the corner from the visitor center. In 2018, the learning laboratories were voted America's best restroom in a nationwide contest. They give new meaning to the phrase, when nature calls. You guys here, we're right now creating a mobile classroom. No. It's called the WOW, Wildlife on Wheels. My friend's group, the Ding Darling Wildlife Society, is funding the project. Fish and Wildlife Service has put, you know, my time and for design, plus the pullout exhibits. It's going to be a mobile classroom visitor center that we've been planning for a year. Now might be even more important during kids not being able to go on field trips. Everything's going to be wipeable, but we're taking it even to local events um, as soon as we can. You know, art walk, music walk, the brewery any festivals um it's going to be unbelievable i don't know what else to say except for i'm so excited it's the biggest thing i've ever worked on so um, is it, is it a, a trailer or a, it is a, a 36 RV? foot trailer that you it's ada accessible in the front and the back um and like i mentioned there's exhibits that will pull out also so that increases the value and educational experience where these mobile exhibits can go out also um, it's all being put with the curriculum for school. So we're having lesson plans K through 12 so that it's worth, you know, um, the bang for the buck when it comes to kids learning in schools. Uh, we're super excited. We're debuting it in October. Our annual Ding Darling Days has been postponed um, until December 1st. We are going to have 
fingers crossed, you're the first to hear it. We are going to celebrate our 75th anniversary on December 1st. It's the actual day, along with a, a mini Ding Darling Day, and also um, kind of a great experience where you can come out and experience the wow, the mobile classroom too. So oh, wow, that's great. we're really excited about, we're gonna change the format of the festival to make it safe. We're gonna have it spread out and fun activities that they can do as people can do as families or social distancing kind of groups and you can do it on your own throughout the day you can come see an animal talk you can visit the different booths um you can go to our celebration at one o'clock we'll have a time capsule and all this kind of fun stuff so december 1st is going to be again fingers crossed we're going to be back in action um, and having a really fun 75th celebration. Tony, how long has the the uh, Wildlife on Wheels, how long has that been in, um, you know, an idea? So, for years. Yeah. Um, Bergie Miller, our executive director of the Friends Group, and myself, back in 2010, we went together to a Fish and Wildlife Service National Conference, and there was something similar there from the East Coast, and, Bergy always thinking outside the box, helping us find funding, going above and beyond, and being creative, said, we're going to do that one day. And now, <laughs> I can't believe it's happening. And so for just under a year, um, well, they found the trailer, and it's up in North Carolina. They're rehabbing it. We've got the same artist that designed the scat and the archway and the manatee and all this stuff. He's doing the inside. We have another company um, doing the pullout exhibits. We're really excited. This may be what can be our visitor center this mm -hmm. fall. Mm -hmm. um, we just don't know what any of this means, but we're so excited because there's some cool stuff we have planned um, inside and out to get people excited and learning. I just love that we'll be able to reach communities we've never been able to go out to Mockley and down to Naples. I mean, not everybody gets to Sanibel. We want them to come and enjoy this amazing refuge, but not everybody gets out here. So we need to be a part of the community. And that is a big push to be, it's, it's an urban initiative with the Fish and Wildlife Service to get out from our refuges into the communities. Um, and then hopefully it springboards them back to here or to other refuges or even to any you know part of nature in their backyards. So we're super excited to unveil this. That's a great outreach program. All right, Jackie, here's the quiz. What is this called? It's the long green bean. I know. It's so much easier to remember that, right? Ray? Oh, no. You can do the P. It's such a hard word. Pod. So, so. Pod. It's a pod. No. It's a, <laughs> it's a podcast. No, it's a showcast. It's a propagule. 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 So, propagule. what we're going to do is you're all going to take it one. Like Thomas's grandfather. Okay, we're going to plant a tree. And how do we do that here on Sanibel? We throw the propagule into the water. There we go. There, there we go. go. Does that feel good? Propagule. Yeah. <laughs> propagule. Isn't that the funniest? Oh, look at all those baby fish. Propagule. Nursery of the sea. It's going to end up on our dinner plate one day. That's right. If we catch it or we get it at the store. How did you wind up at Ding Darling? So I'm actually originally from Wisconsin. I'm with the name Tony. My father wanted a boy. I was his last chance at a boy. I was the third daughter and that was it. And so I got the name Tony because he's all Italian. And I just became the boy of the family, hunting, fishing, doing all those types of things and realized young, I didn't want to work inside. I loved nature. Um, and then went to school, University of Wisconsin Stevens Point, got a natural resources degree, second degree in environmental education interpretation, loved teaching outdoors, and found out about the Fish and Wildlife Service. And gosh, it's you know all about being at the right place at the right time when it comes to jobs and knowing people and your talents. Um, and so I joined the federal government right after college, and so. Worked at some really cool places, but this is by far, I mean, as long as a lot of people say, do you have to go somewhere else? We don't. You're doing a great job. I'm raising my children here in Lee County. I mean, it's just such an awesome mm -hmm. place to live. Sometimes it smells like skunks. 
We don't have skunks on Sanibel. It's a plant called the stopper. And it releases that fragrant smell. <laughs> so people will come back, I smell the skunk out. And we're like, no, it's actually a plant. What? It's like, yeah, it's a stopper. And it has the smell of a skunk. Here we are at the, the learning laboratory. It's one of my favorite places to stop venting, darling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know it's funny when one of her favorite places is, but it's cool, isn't it? It's really cool. It's a manatee made out of bicycle tires. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? It is. So yes, another one of those crazy ideas by our amazing friends group, the Ding Darling Wildlife Society. No federal funds went into this, okay? So I want to repeat, your tax dollars have not gone into decorating a bathroom and making it educational, but yet people that support and love the refuge gave this money. And what it was is we have 8,000 school kids come here every year and line up along this fence. Mm -hmm. And what's the first thing people need to do when they come out in nature usually? Go to the Use bathroom. the restroom. And yeah. we get school kids ready for their field trip lining up along here. Well, now the field trip can start here because this is 36 feet of an underwater ecosystem, a pristine ecosystem in which this is what we're here to protect. Um, now, there is hidden treasures, both, there's about 70 different animals hidden throughout here, but there's also, yeah, there's, a, yes, this is perfect for the shell cast, I know, right? I know. Who doesn't want to know about the horse conch? Um, but also, you know, things about hazards. People think this is a jellyfish and it's a plastic bag. That's the whole point about keeping plastics and trash out of the ocean. And I love that you pointed out these manatees are actually made out of recycled bike tires. Local student went to school at the Sanibel School, became an artist, lives in Denver now, but he used bike tires from Billy's Bikes right here on the island, and he makes art. His name is Andrew Cork. He makes his art out of corks and recycled products like bike tires, and it's just such a cool way to show that. And I think Ding would be proud as an artist that um, art continues here at Ding Darling along with education. And this is a mom and a baby manatee. Unfortunately, we didn't see him out on the refuge today, but you got to see him here. That's right. Um, That's right. So cool, right? Mangroves. I mean, this is the only place to take a safe selfie with an alligator. It's so cool to see you know, the perspective of the belly of an alligator swimming over top of you. It is. It's cool. It's like we're underwater. And look, and the, um, the alarm there is a jellyfish, right? Yes. Right. Isn't that cool? The artist, I think, thought of everything, including that. And we do have a scavenger hunt that kids can get inside and, and then look at what's in the mural. The women's, come on into the women's room. We're going into the bathroom. <laughs> yes, so the women's restroom and the men's restroom is it's different. It's nice and cool in here, right? It is nice and cool. <laughs> they are cleaned daily, open to the public, um, different. You can see a river otter, sea turtles, ospreys. Each bird, each stall is a different bird. And so depending on which bird you pick, the white pelican, the roseate spoonbill, the anhinga, when you're inside, we're giving you a fun fact about that bird. Because again, 245 different species. Now watch, the toilet's going to flush when she's in there probably. Okay, I don't want to flush. Right. Um, but yeah, this is a way that we could educate. This is a picture on this wall. The tile is actually embedded with a photograph of you kayaking out at the refuge. So they're beautiful. The men's room is more fishing. Big tarpon for the tarpon tournament and sport fishing. The first tarpon ever caught on a rod and reel happened in Tarpon Bay by W.H. Wood back in the late 1800s. And so we have, I believe, one of the best tarpon tournaments um, in the country, in Southwest Florida. Do you want to see the men's room? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. Come on in. We do have an artist in residence program now. Our first artist in residence. We can talk about him because um, we just picked our new one. We actually haven't even mentioned it yet. Minus the garbage cans from the beginning. <laughs> so as you can see, here is the tarpon. 
We're in the men's restroom. We're in the men's restroom. This is a sculpture to replicate that first tarpon, a 93-pound tarpon caught on rod and reel in Tarpon Bay. If you haven't gone down and kayaked in Tarpon Bay with Tarpon Bay explorers, you have not lived um, because it's a beautiful experience. Green herons, you know, we, we are able to talk a lot about fishing line and how we need to pick our fishing line up. But mm -hmm. the men also have different birds in here to learn in their stalls. So it's just another way of, you know, reminding people about nature, making it fun. It was awesome to win this cast, the contest. Um, and I know a lot of people out there helped us. You guys helped us to, to make that happen. So, so we're wrapping up our tour with, with Tony Westland and thank you, Ranger Tony, so much. Thank uh, we you. We learned so much and it's just beautiful to come out here in the morning and see nature when it's a little cooler. Yes. And there's you know, <laughs> bicyclists and you know, photographers and so many people out taking advantage. Yeah, that's what's so great about nature is there's no boundaries when it comes to, you can meet people all walks of life, all different careers. The one thing we all have in common is the appreciation for our health, for the wildlife um, and getting out. And so there's so many different ways to do it also. So we invite people to come out social distance, clean your hands, you know, only come out if you're feeling well, but get out into nature. If it's not here at this National Wildlife Refuge, state parks and Audubon centers, any part of nature, nature's in your backyard. It's um, anywhere you can, you can find it. It's so, it's so accessible here in Southwest Florida to get out and enjoy. So we hope to see you all out at Ding Darling soon. Thank you, Tony. Thanks. That's gonna do it for this episode of Shellcast. We've got two more episodes from the JN Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge on Sanibel Island to share with you. In another episode, Ranger Tony Westlin gives us a tour of Wildlife Drive where we see roseate spoonbills, the other pink bird. And in another episode, we take a walk with Ranger Tony along the Indigo Trail and see all the scat boxes along the boardwalk. Don't worry, they're carvings, so there's no smell. And anyway, this is audio. For more information about JN Ding Darling's National Wildlife Refuge here on Sanibel Island, visit the Fish and Wildlife website and they have um, a lot of information on the refuge. There are several apps to download that will prepare you to get you ready, um, quizzes and you know, bird guides, all sorts of great stuff. And also a reminder, Wildlife Drive is closed on Friday. Thank you always to Ray Saracino for your excellent tech, and thanks to our colleague, Courtney Hersel for the theme music. Shellcast, the podcast of the beaches of Fort Myers and Sanibel, is produced by the Lee County Visitor and Convention Bureau in Fort Myers, Florida. Shellcast is available wherever fine podcasts are downloaded and at fortmyers-sanibel.com. If you have any questions or a suggestion for an episode of Shellcast, please email us at shellcastthepodcast at gmail.com. And Shellcast is also available on Instagram at Shellcast the Podcast. I'm Jackie Parker. Thanks for listening to Shellcast, and we'll catch you again next time. <laughs>